can I have the group that's in front of me come here? That the group that so like send my email, the group that's in front of me, can you form one night? Okay. Then the other groups, the right and left, can you come together behind them? Does that make sense? Yes. So I have one group in front of me, then one group. Thank you. Um, let's get ready. Let's get. Let's stay. Let's stay. Yeah. For now, I mean, we're bringing the start.
or the organist. Good afternoon. Ang magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. I'm Father Erno, the chairperson of the San Lorenzo Ruiz Global Ministry. Our procession will, will start now. And um,
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to welcome you to our Eucharistic celebration for the Feast of San Lorenzo Ruiz. We have His Eminence, Orlando Quevedo, Archbishop Emeritus of Cotabato, who is our celebrant and who will be our homilist. Warm welcome to him. His first time to celebrate Mass for us, for San Lorenzo Ruiz. I would like also to extend a special welcome to our dignitaries from the Philippine Consulate, Consul General Sinan Mangalili and his wife, and also our civic leaders, Mrs. Loida, Nicholas Lewis, and of course our Hermanus Hermanas. They came here to grace our occasion and to lend a Filipino flavor to our Mass for San Lorenzo Ruiz. You know, in the Philippines, in every fiesta, they have hermanos and hermanas. So we continue this tradition here in the cathedral. Would like to welcome also the relatives and friends of His Eminence who have come to, to attend this Mass, and also the um, many deputies from all over New York and New Jersey who are with us. This is the Feast of San Lorenzo Ruiz. His image was carried in a procession. And do you know that this statue of San Lorenzo Ruiz will be enthroned permanently here in the cathedral on October 25? If you look to your left, to the right, to the right, you see there the niche of uh, St. Rose of Lima, San Lorenzo statue will be placed beside the statue of St. Rose of Lima. And I was told by Father Enrique Salvo, the rector of the cathedral, what is the significance of San Lorenzo Ruiz standing beside St. Rose of Lima? I'm sure all of you will be surprised. St. Rose of Lima, is the patroness of the Philippines. Now you know, right? <laughs> now you know how significant it is that San Lorenzo will be standing beside St. Rose of Lima. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Now we continue with our Mass. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my yes, thoughts and in my words, in, words, in what, what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sinned against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he has no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, 
and all his properties in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Move with compassion, the master of the servant let him, let him go and forgive him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had a fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the death. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgive you your entire debt because you begged me to. So do you not have pity on your fellow servant as I have pity on you? Then, in anger, his master handed, handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgive your brothers from your heart? The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Maayong hapon. Naimbag ang malam kada kaya amin. Maayong buntag. These are the languages in the Philippines that I know. I'm more of an Ilonggo than Ilocano, although I was born in Ilocos Norte. I was a kid when we went to Marbel, South Cotabato, which is Ilonggo dominated. So I grew up speaking Ilonggo. It is said that uh, Cardinal Tagle is the youngest looking bishop in the world. Indeed, he, he has a baby face. He doesn't seem to grow old, at least on the face. But I am without any doubt the smallest bishop, <laughs> cardinal in the world. Preparing for this Mass, I wondered whether there could be a platform behind the altar so that you can see me. And there is no problem with the lectern because it's short and the microphone and there's no nothing to hide me. 
I can be seen and I can be heard. That's important. My brothers and sisters, this is truly a day given by the Lord. We are celebrating Mass in honor of our first Filipino saint, San Lorenzo Ruiz. Actually, this is the first time I see San Lorenzo Ruiz posing like that. Usually, I see him with that statuette. Simply with his hands close to him, but not in gesture. Imagine that you know the story about San Pedro Kalungsod. He was killed in Guam. He begged for his life. And she was, since he was Bisaya, he said, Spear me, spear me, instead of spare me, spare me. <laughs> so, without any hesitation, binangkaw siya, he is speared. That's not an original joke from me. I heard it from uh, Bicolano Archbishop. I wish to thank His Eminence Cardinal Dolan for inviting me to preside at this Holy Mass. I also thank Father Erno Diaz and the San Lorenzo Ruiz Global Ministry for organizing this joyful occasion. Likewise, I thank the hermanas and hermanos, the offerers, and the Philippine government officials here present. Our liturgy of the word this Sunday has one common theme, God's compassion for us and our compassion for others. As the first reading from the book of Sirach says, Forgive and your sins will be forgiven. Have mercy on your neighbor and God will have mercy on you. Our responsorial psalm tells us that the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The book of Sirach says that God will have mercy on us if we forgive others. And how many times are we to forgive our neighbor? The gospel tells us 77 times or countless times. An indefinite number of times should we forgive our neighbor. And we must forgive not by word, but from our hearts. The greatest example of God's compassion is Jesus, our Lord. In fact, one great theologian called Jesus the compassion of God. He personifies God's compassion from the cross, he forgave all those responsible for crucifying him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the Gospels tell us of the many individuals whose sins he forgave. Forgiveness leads to respect. Respect brings reconciliation, unity, and solidarity. Individuals with conflicting self-interests, groups and associations in conflict, or with divergent opinions, are reconciled through mutual understanding, 
respect, and forgiveness. The compassionate love of God is abundantly demonstrated in the extraordinary life and death of San Lorenzo Ruiz. We are familiar with his awe-inspiring story. He was born in Binondo, Manila, of a Chinese father and a Filipino mother, both Catholics. He became an altar boy in the Binondo Church and was devoted to the Blessed Mother and married a lady named, appropriately, Rosario. Then he was falsely accused of murdering a Spaniard and sought refuge with the Dominican fathers. Three Dominicans brought him along to Okinawa with a Japanese priest and a lay leper from Kyoto. And the Christian persecution in Japan by the Tokugawa shogunate had been raging for many years. Hence, arriving in Okinawa, the six Christians from the Philippines were arrested by Japanese authorities and transported to Nagasaki. And there, Lorenzo Ruiz and his five companions, three Dominicans, one Japanese priest, one lay leper, were severely and brutally tortured. They were hanged upside down with blood flowing from a small cut on their bodies. They were also bound, but with one hand free and able to give a sign should they recant and reject Christ. This was a usual torture and hanging the Japanese persecutors did to the thousands of Christians who were killed during the 200 years of persecution. They made it possible for an individual to make a signal, said, I reject Christ. Save me. And many indeed succumb to the temptation of recanting their faith. But the words of San Lorenzo expressed his enduring faith. I am a Catholic and wholeheartedly accept death for God. And after two days of excruciating suffering, Lorenzo died of loss of blood and suffocation. He was cremated, and his ashes were thrown into the sea. But his companions lingered on for another day and were beheaded. Lorenzo was only 42 years old, a martyr witnessing to Jesus to the very end. He was beatified in Manila by Pope John Paul II in 1981, the year he made me a bishop. In fact, when I met Pope John Paul II in the house of Cardinal Sin, or as someone said among the Filipinos, in the house of sin, he saw me and I was wondering whether if he embraced me, his hand would be over my head rather than on my shoulder. And I, he said to me, you look very young as a bishop. <laughs> and I told to him with a laugh, Holy Father, it is your fault. <laughs> and I said, the Holy Spirit, if it was... If I was at fault, it was the Holy Spirit's fault, he said. 
He was the first to be beatified outside Rome. Six years later, on October 18, 1987, he was canonized as a saint with his five companions and 10 other martyrs. In March 2015, Pope Francis sent me as his official delegate to the 150th anniversary of the discovery of the hidden Christians in Nagasaki. I blessed the crosses of the 16 martyrs of Japan, of Nagasaki, including that of San Lorenzo Ruiz. Unknown to many is another martyr, a Japanese samurai, a daimyo, a lord, whose name is Dom Hosto Takayama, Takayama, or Takayama Okon. Okon is a title, Lord. There is a marker dedicated to him at Plaza de Lao in Paco, Manila. He and his father were converts to Christianity, who belonged to the hidden Christians of Nagasaki. As generals, they won battles and wars for their military lord, Hideyoshi. But when Hideyoshi began to expel missionaries and ban Christianity and begin killing Christians, Takayama Okun escaped to Manila with 300 of his soldiers who were converts to Christianity. And he soon died after arrival in Manila and was buried with full military honors by the Spaniards in 1615, 22 years before San Lorenzo's execution in, in Okinawa, in Nagasaki. We can understand the death of San Lorenzo only in the context of the thousands who were martyred in Japan during the Christian persecution. My brothers and sisters, our path to heaven is a path of faith and love of the God of compassion. San Lorenzo Ruiz is a model of such deep faith. He entrusted his whole life to God. Faith is basically an entrustment of oneself to God, making oneself vulnerable to God. He said, had I a thousand lives, all this to God shall I offer. Entrustment of his whole life to God. He learned to believe in God and to love God, not only in the catechism that he learned from the Dominican priests, but most importantly, through praying to the Blessed Mother. He was especially devoted to praying the Holy Rosary. He belonged to the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. It was through prayer that he deepened his faith and love of God. And despite his excruciating sufferings in Nagasaki, he did not reject Christ. He remained as a faithful disciple of the Lord. Love of the Blessed Mother was a significant feature in the spiritual life of the heathen Christians of Nagasaki. In 1865, after years of hiding, the, some heathen Christians heard 
that a missionary priest, French missionary priest, had built a church. A group of women went to the church and asked the priest two questions. Are you married? He said, no, I'm not married. That means he was some kind of a Christian priest or Catholic priest. But they wanted to add something more to be sure. They asked him if he venerated a holy woman. So the missionary priest brought the group into the church and showed them the statue of the Blessed Mother. They were overjoyed and wept. They wept as they finally saw an image of the Blessed Mother in public, not hidden. Not hidden as an Indian goddess, so that if they see, persecutor Japanese would see the statue of the Blessed Mother, they would think it's simply a goddess, not Mary. So they revealed to the priest that they were Christians. This was how the hidden Christians of Nagasaki were discovered. And the whole world realized that there were still a few thousand Christians in Japan that survived in hiding after more, more than 200 years of terrible persecution. The statue of the Blessed Mother is still there at the Ora Cathedral in Nagasaki. With his devotion to prayer and his love for the Blessed Mother was his love of the Eucharist. As an altar boy in Benondo Church, he served at the Holy Masses of the priests. And when a person regularly serves at the Eucharist, one cannot but fall in love with the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Eucharist is, after all, the source and summit of all grace, the sacrament of the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ, the one source of grace. And as he served at the Mass of Christ's own self-sacrifice, his desire to share in Christ's suffering grew so that at the end he could say, had I a thousand lives, I would offer them all to God. Such is the example that San Lorenzo Ruiz gives us an example of deep faith and love of God, an example of love of the Holy Eucharist, the very same sacrifice that we are now celebrating this afternoon. His was a life of prayer, of devotion to the Blessed Mother, a life of deep compassion, of wanting to share, in the sufferings of Christ. For compassion simply means, from the Latin, to suffer with. We Filipinos, my brothers and sisters, are known as a happy people. Our poverty and underdevelopment withstanding we live in a time of peace and prosperity, but the journey to eternal happiness in God's kingdom is always a daily struggle towards holiness. And let San Lorenzo Ruiz be our inspiration, our guide, our intercessor, Let us praise the Lord. Mabuhay ang Panginoon. Mabuhay ang Panginoon.
Praise Jesus. Exclaim to Jesus. Praise Him. Mabuhay si San Lorenzo Ruiz. Viva Señor San Lorenzo. Thank you and God bless. Let us rise for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten that made come substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was created under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life to the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God hears and answers prayers, we confidently raise our voices and express our needs. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for all bishops, priests, and religious, that they may always become beacons of hope to all, and that they may continue to inspire the world in the way of righteousness, justice, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Para sa sambayan ng Filipino, dito sa Amerika, sa Pilipinas at sa ibang bansa, para kanilang pahalagahan ang kanilang pananampalataya, Kristiano, at kanilang ipahatid sa ibang tao ang mabuting balita ng Panginoon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Filipinos may always uphold their beautiful traits of hospitality, love of family, and love of God, respect and compassion for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That following the charism of our two first Filipino saints, Lorenzo Ruiz and Pedro Calungsod, we may take life's adversities as opportunities for virtues and spiritual strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, hear and answer the prayers of this assembly gathered here today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
galak na kuy turing bilang sang my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, 
might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be not manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Patrick, San Lorenzo, Ruiz, and all the saints <coughs> who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine <laughs> teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to enter under my roof. When you say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, please be seated for a while. Uh, <clears throat> we're coming to a close of our beautiful uh, Mass today. But uh, before that, uh, <clears throat> we would like to have a gift presentation to His Eminence. You know, this is like um, a tradition for San Lorenzo Mass, like... Um, like a token gift, like uh, representing or symbolic of New York, will be presented to His Eminence. So um, I would like to call on um, Dr. Sonny Albano and Mrs. Uh, Noemi Albano to please come forward to present the gift. And they will be accompanied by Eder Miranda of Staten Island. Please come up. You'll be very happy to see the gift. <laughs> Your Eminence, this is a gift uh, from us, from New York. It's a mix, it's a mix. And also we have Mrs. Benilda Jainal, please come forward to present your special gift. Benilda Jainal, Jainal, Jainal. Chief Bug, uh, there's chairwoman. Mr. Uh, there, Paris Miranda is the chair lady of CPAG, and she is a symbol of the youth leadership of Staten Island. Another gift, a special gift, <laughs> will be presented to his eminence by Mrs. Benilda Jainal. No, they knew each other from many years ago. So. <laughs> it's a crystal. Um, I think it's a statuette of the Blessed Virgin. Thank you very much, uh, to, uh, Dr. and Ms. Albano and Edward Miranda and Mrs. Benilda Jaina. At this point, I would like to call on Mr. Jose Ramos to lead the prayer to San Lorenzo Ruiz. Mr. Ramos, please come up. The prayer to San Lorenzo Ruiz is in the Missalette. Please join in prayer, in the prayer to San Lorenzo Ruiz. to San Lorenzo Ruiz. <clears throat> Beloved Lorenzo Ruiz, confronted with death, you proclaim your readiness to die a thousand times for your Christian faith. Today, the whole world admires your courage. We feel particularly proud of you as our brother. And we pray, you, a family man, protect our families, Keep them united in love. You who bore your sufferings with patience and resignation, 
Intercede for the sick of mind and body. Help them to receive the grace of God's miraculous healing. You who died in a foreign country, take care of Filipinos living and working in this country and in other parts of the world. You, an example of Christian fortitude, sustain our faith and make it spread and grow strong all around us. You, the Philippines' first saint, be the country's special protector. Unite us as one people. Help us to work in harmony for development and progress and give us peace. Amen. Um, before the final blessing of His Eminence, I just would like to uh, give a few words of acknowledgement. You know, with deep gratitude, we would like to thank His Eminence Cardinal Orlando Quevedo for celebrating the Solemn Mass for the Feast of San Lorenzo Ruiz. The good cardinal flew all the way from Cotabato, Philippines, to honor our first Filipino saint. You know, this is a tradition that goes back all the way to 1982-84, when Cardinal Sin celebrated Mass, followed by Cardinal John O'Connor, Cardinal Edward Egan, Cardinal Gord uh, Gaudencio Rosales, Cardinal Jose Antonio Tagli, and many other archbishops and bishops from the Philippines and from here. It's overwhelming to know that these prominent prelates have honored a humble sacristan from Binondo, making true the words of the Blessed Virgin Mary that the lowly shall be exalted. I'd like to acknowledge also the, uh, the um, presence of our concelebrants who are here, led by Father Brian McQueenie, who is the Director of Ethnic Ministries in the Diocese and Ecclesial Communities. May I thank also His Eminence, Cardinal Timothy Dolan, Father Enrique Salvo, Rector of St. Paris Cathedral, Father Andrew King, the uh, Master of Ceremonies. would like to for the support of the San Lorenzo Ministry in the Diocese. Special thanks to our hermanos and hermanas who are here. Look at them. Look at them. <laughs> Thank you very much. When I say hermanos, hermanas, you know the other name for that is even better. Big brothers, big sisters of San Lorenzo Ruiz. Isn't it? Right? Think about that. You are our big brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to thank um, uh, Dr. and Mrs. Paul Albano, who were kind in underwriting the, the plain fare of his eminence. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney Ferdinand Suba for buying or donating these statuettes. These are the statuettes of San Lorenzo, which I bought in the Philippines. This will be given to our hermanos hermanas to take home. When you take home, keep it for your personal devotion or share it with others so that you can promote San Lorenzo Ruiz, please. And also, would like to thank Ping Panlilio for the medallions that our hermanos and hermanas are wearing. Ping, where are you? Okay. Now, of course, Margie and John Skills. Margie is the chair of this fiesta. She worked, you know, very hard to make this fiesta a success. Where are you, Margie? Please acknowledge. And assisted by her husband, John Skills, who made the visalette. They spent sleepless nights to make sure that everything is okay here. And to the Knights of Rizal, who headed by uh, J.K. Yab Yab and the ladies for Rizal for their tremendous assistance as authors maintaining peace and order during the Mass. Thank you very much, uh, guys. You know. And of course, for Eddie Manung Song, a member also of the Knight of Rizal who designed the carriage for San Lorenzo. Make sure that you know, he can be carried during the procession. 
to Senio Barrio for taking charge of the altar servers, and for the members of our working committee, there's so many of them. Thank you very much for your assistance. Look at you, look at our celebration. It's so beautiful. <laughs> now, thank you to our Consul General, Sinan Mangalile and Mrs. Faye Mangalile. And of course, Lloyda Lewis, you know, our offerers. What about our San Lorenzo Ruiz Choir and uh, friends? You know, I promised, you know, the National Filipino Priest Association that this choir will sing again on October 25 here. I hope, brothers and sisters, that you'll find time to attend the October 25 Consolidated Mass of the National Filipino Priest Association. More than 500 priests will consolidate here, and this choir will sing at that Mass. So thank you, June. Thank you, uh, um, uh, Dr. Jennifer Pasquale, and all the members of the choir. <laughs> and to all of you, all of you, devotees and friends of San Lorenzo Ruiz, thank you for your support. Thank you for your devotion. God bless you all. I wish to thank all of you for being here. Big celebration for San Lorenzo Ruiz. And if you happen to go to the Philippines, please visit us in Cotabato City. <laughs> Have, is the main city of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. It's very safe. <laughs> because many of the top leaders of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front are graduates of our Notre Dame schools. They respect priests, sisters, and if you are Catholic, you say, saludo kayo. Have a cup of coffee with me. And uh, if you want a meal, bring your own baon. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.